previously on the Bee Vlog. Well, I did something dumb. And now part two of harvesting honey. All right, once you've got the super free of all the bees, then it's safe to bring it indoors. And this extraction process is definitely something you wanna do indoors. As you expose honey, if you're outside, it can cause bees to come out and be attracted to the honey and create a robbing frenzy. So I like to do this in my kitchen where it's easy to clean up. I've got water on hand and surfaces that are easy to clean. The tools that I use for crush and strain extraction are pretty cheap and easy to get. This whole thing cost me maybe $35, $40 at the most. And the first bucket that goes on the bottom is one that has a honey gate. This honey gate is really the most expensive part. It's about a $20 part and you can actually buy them already assembled with the bucket. That makes it easier. So the bucket with the honey gate would be around $25. You can buy them separate. You maybe get a cheaper if you find some cheap deal online and, and assemble it yourself. But I find this easier to already have it done. Um, this honey gate allows it to, um, for the honey to flow out and go into the bottle easier. It's just, instead of trying to dip in, you just let it flow out the honey gate. Um, on top of this bucket goes a lid that has a hole cut out of it. And that hole allows the bucket that's going to go on top of it to strain out the honey. Now I'll show you the whole stack as it goes. So the bucket with the honey gate goes on the bottom, low lid with the hole on top of that. On top of that, I have a second bucket. I used to have smaller holes in the bottom of this. They were about a 3 8 inch hole, quarter inch hole or so. Uh, I found that those tiny holes make it harder for the honey to strain out. The wax tends to gum those up and just create a blockage. So I just went at it with a two inch hole saw. Uh, you don't, this bucket doesn't really do anything other than hold up the straining bag, which is the next part. The straining bag is just a cheap paint straining bag. You can buy at any hardware store. You can get a bag of, uh, uh, you can get about three of them for maybe eight to $10. This is a polypropylene bag. I recommend washing it well with soap and water before your first use. This goes inside the top bucket and then all of the honey, wax, and goo is going to go inside this bag. Other tools I use, obviously a, a hive tool so you can get these frames out. The frames have been in the box all season, never being moved, so they're really well propolized in. To cut the wax out of the frame, I use a serrated knife. I buy used ones because this will ruin your knife. All the wax and propolis will be permanently attached to the serrations. After cutting out the wax, I put it all into a glass bowl. I typically only work one frame at a time. And a heavy duty wooden spoon for mashing. I set the bowl on a cutting board that has a non-slip bottom just to keep things stable. I've also used rags in the past because I don't like the sound of glass on tile. All that mashing and turning and smashing makes a lot of clanking and banging and I find that it might mar the surface or damage things. Also, I just don't like the sound of it. Under the super, I have a sheet pan and I actually got these sheet pans free from a bakery that was getting rid of them. Um, because some of these sheet pans have a little bit of residue on them, I actually covered it with this um, parchment paper and that just helps the honey to drain out. As I'm doing this cutting, I expose a lot of honey and it tends to drip out of the frames and make a mess on the counter. So this is just to catch those drippings, keep it from building up inside uh, underneath the super and uh, keep things nice and clean and easy to clean up. I also have a wet rag on hand that I use to just get the sticky honey off my fingers. You do get it all over your hands sometimes. So this just helps to keep things clean and non-sticky. All right, this process usually takes me about an hour. To keep me honest, I'm gonna set up a clock so you can see in real time how long this takes for one super. So it's about 9.45 a.m. and let's get started.
When crushing the comb, be sure to break every cell. If any cells are left intact, the honey will not strain out of it. The more smashed up, the better. This method of extracting honey is really my favorite. I find it's faster, less messy, and less honey goes to waste. With less equipment and even less expensive equipment, this is also the cheapest way to harvest honey. And everything stores away nicely, taking up less space in the garage or closet. Even though I use foundationless frames, this can also be done if you use foundation. Many people criticize this method of harvesting because the comb is destroyed in the process. People make claims about all the work that the bees put into building the comb. Yes, it's true, it takes work to build comb. It also takes work to make honey, but nobody seems bothered about taking that. There is an often quoted statistic that says bees use 8 pounds of honey to create 1 pound of wax. I call balderdash on that number. It's bunk. Everybody repeats it, but nobody knows where it comes from. I'll put a link in the video description for more information on this. Yes, there is some expense in wax production, but that's what bees do. I'm not too concerned about maximizing honey yields, so I don't worry about what little bit of honey I'm missing out on. Besides, I like that I get a nice wax harvest. Wax, to me, is more valuable than the honey. No wax gets thrown away. I melt it all down and use it for a variety of things. One of the benefits to crush and strain is it can also be done in small batches. You may notice that some of these frames have light amber honey and others have very dark honey. If I wanted to, I could extract each of these colors separately and have two distinctive flavors of honey. I'm not doing that here though because while I prefer the taste of the darker honey, this honey is in old brood comb and I don't really like the taste of brood. However, if I mix it with lighter honey, it tastes better. So I'm mixing these two flavors to kind of mellow it out a bit, but keep some of the rich flavor of the dark honey. Cleanup is really easy. Since there aren't many dishes to do, there isn't much honey wasted or flushed down the drain. Some people will set the dishes outside to let the bees clean it up. The intention is to return this otherwise wasted honey to the hive. I don't like doing this myself. I've done this in the past and it created a crazy cloud of bees all around my property and in my neighbor's properties as bees would come from miles to come get the tasty treat I left out. I had complaints. If you live in an urban or a suburban neighborhood, I don't recommend you allow or encourage robbing behavior. Doing this can also pose a danger to your hives. Once bees from other hives start coming to your property to rob, they'll start looking for other sources of honey and may rob out your hives. It might be painful to rinse this little bit of liquid gold away, but not nearly as painful as watching a hive get robbed to death. Having foundationless frames, I can also make cut comb. This square is about a pound. I really like it, but most people don't really know what to do with it. I like to have some on hand, but I've found that one or two pounds per year is enough for me. All right, that's it. Uh, it's 10.15, so it took me half hour of crushing. There was about 20 minutes in setup. There's gonna be about 10 minutes in cleanup. I'm going to let this super with the empty frames sit and continue to drip out. And then once it's done dripping, I'll clean up that honey and it just goes into the bucket with the rest of it. There were two frames I did not extract because this frame had just a tiny bit of honey in it and very little comb. And there was a second frame here, if I can get it out. That was fully drawn out, but had a lot of uncapped honey and wasn't fully um, filled with honey. So I'm just gonna leave that as food for another hive if they need it for the winter. And so I extracted eight frames. 
And I also got a little bit of cut comb. So when you use foundationless frames like I do, if you find one that's really pretty, you can make cut comb and that's great at parties, good on cheese and crackers, or just eating plain, I love it. That's all, see you next time. Next time on the Bee Vlog, I make some splits at the end of the summer to prepare nukes for the winter.